Bros from the City podcast, episode six. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at b underscore city underscore. You can follow the podcast at Views from the City PC on Instagram. Happy New Year to everybody, twenty twenty four. This is the first interview of twenty twenty four. My guest for today is someone that actually popped this shit off from the beginning. I mean, first event in the fucking White Park for people that's not familiar with the White Park in Brownsville. With a hundred niggas is around, been putting in pain, got his own clothing line. We're going to get into a whole bunch of greedy shit. And I say this to every guest that come on this show. It will be no We Go Hard TV without this man right here. K.O., what up, man? People, people, what's going on? What's going on? We here. Happy New Year, Happy City. Happy New Year. Peace oh, and blessings. Peace and Thanks blessings. for having me. Thanks you know, for having me. You know that, man. How you, man? Let me get the mic adjusted. Pause. Yeah, you go. You go. <laughs> Pause that. Well, how you doing? Um, I'm good, man. I'm, I'm alive. I'm living, I'm well. Right. And I'm still live and direct, you heard? Uh huh. Talk that shit. Talk Word. that shit. All right, man. Let's just start from the very, very beginning, man. Your name, K.O. How did that name come about? The name, K.O. Oh, that's easy. Like, being a kid raised in the 90s, playing video games, a game that helped me release a lot of anger was always Street Fighter. Okay. So, but that wasn't. My name always at first. In the beginning, my name was Star Kid. Oh yeah, I remember. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, in the beginning, my name was Star Kid. Right. So, why you changed from Star Kid to Ko? Um, the first person that brought me into the into like a, a a house crib studio was a dude named Fire Kid. Shout okay. out to Fire Kid. He from Coney Island. Oh yeah, shout out, that's my guy. Yeah, that's my guy. But um, around the time when he brought me to a studio. I ain't really have a name yet. Like they was calling me Chip in the hood. Okay. Like okay. you know, I used to be you know drug dealing or whatever, selling drugs or whatever. Right. And I would you know I would always have my shit in a bag of chips. You get what I'm saying? This yeah. is before times now where yeah. you can actually walk outside with a big ass bag that say marshmallows and sprinkles on it. Mm. The time when I was when I was trapping marijuana, you couldn't do that. Right. So I would always probably have like a 50 cent bag or whatever, or Doritos or whatever. Mm-hmm. And everybody would call me Chip. And then from Chip, that's when it went to Star Kid. And then from Star Kid, it went to KO. Got you, got you, got you. All right, um, how did you find out about We Go Hard TV? Um, because I know, I know, I personally, I know, I, I, you know I mean, I found out through Fresh. You know what I mean? I know Fresh hit, hit me and he was telling me about you. That's how I found out about you. But did you find, like, how did you find out? Or did Fresh come to you and... Yeah, Fresh came to me. Fresh would have... Fresh, who's my god brother, who, you know, I'm, I'm actually related to. He had a, a music group mm-hmm. when I was um, young back in the days. It was called The Hooligans. Okay. Mm-hmm. And we was, um, we was definitely working, putting in studio time, you know, dropping... Whatever the f- we felt like dropping mixtapes, videos, movies, clips. Know what I mean, just just ventures tr- routing through Brooklyn. You get mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. But we was definitely heavy on the music aspect. But he told me that you had reached out to him. Yeah. And I'm at the time I'm like, you know what's crazy? Because I I, th- I think I seen I seen one of your freestyles. Matter of fact, I don't remember when I pulled up. I pulled up. Um, well, I pulled up. To, I pulled up the Crown Heights. And you did the freestyle in the um, in the park, and you said niggas we asked out like hospital gowns. I don't even remember that shit. The freestyle you did. In the I park. think so. I yeah, think so. This was yeah. before the. This was before the actual before battle. the battle. Yeah, I yeah. never even used none of that material, right? Yeah, 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 that, yeah. That's a fact. So it was just some freestyle shit. Right, and right, I think, right. And I think from there, I went to like y'all like this battle rap shit. Ah, uh-uh, and then the rest was just history, man. Um, talk about your first battle with TD. And how did you feel about that battle? Of course I felt excited. I ain't gonna lie. Okay, so how how did you feel going into the battle? 
since it was your first battle, correct? That was your first yeah. actual battle? So how did you feel preparing for it, writing for it, and going into it? How did you feel? I, oh, I, everything about the situation made me feel nervous. <laughs> everything about the situation, <laughs> uh-huh. inside and out, made me feel nervous. Because I'm not too sure if you know, but Brownsville and Coney Island did have a little bit of beef stirred up at the time. But it wasn't beef as far as rival gang beef like Bloods versus Crips. Right. It was it was beef like on some Crips versus Crips mm -hmm. type of beef. Okay. And at the time, as the people know, I I wasn't Crip affiliated. Right, right. I might have been cool with Crips or whatever, but I wasn't Crip affiliated. So when me and you connected, it didn't really snap in my mind like, all right, if I go to Brownsville, they might front on me because I'm from Coney Island because I know I'm not Crip. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So I was just like, damn, it might be a lot of hate, hate that I might have to overcome just due to me being from Coney Island. But the fact that I'm blood, I got a chance that niggas might hit me out. Like, yo, let me see what this nigga really, you know what I'm saying? Well, let yeah. me see what he talking about. Uh, uh, let me see if he really, right. you know what I'm saying? Because I, I, as you know, I always had a grandmother that lived in Brownsville. So I never yeah, really, I'm, I'm, and I never crossed ties with nobody that lived in Brownsville to have to fight nobody from out here. Even when I did come across niggas that was in the opposite gang that mm -hmm. I was in. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, right. Um, is your grandmother still living? Yeah, my grandma's still alive. God, God bless her. God bless, God bless her. Soul. God bless yeah, her. Soul, grandma's man. still alive. Or... God bless. All right, so in the beginning of We Go Hard TV, right? Mm -hmm. Did you ever feel like you was the face of We Go Hard TV at that time? I never was thinking about the face as like a placement. You know what I'm saying? I never was thinking about the face being like a position, being called that. Like, yo. Being that, you know, you're a heavyweight and we go hard, people gonna look at you as the face. Right. You know what I'm saying? I never seen that. Right. I was I was really a teenager when we go hard started. So, so how how old, how old was you when you When I born? battled T D, I was sixteen years old. Damn, that's crazy. I was sixteen years old when I battled T D. Damn, son, that's crazy, man. Mm -hmm. That's crazy, man. Out of all the battles you did, right? From We Go Hard to any other league or whatever, what's your favorite battle of all time? Or do, you, or do you have one? I mean, it's a double-edged sword with that. Because some people I battled became goats, from what I would say. Who would you say became goats? I would say Chess definitely became a goat in the culture. Mm -hmm. Facts. Definitely. Shout out to him. Shout out to him. Facts. Word. And then it's, it's people that that didn't become a goat, but on the on the on the aspect of that, like on the aspect of a uh, uh, status wise, of course I gotta say me and Chess is my favorite battle. Yeah, on my resume, that's my favorite battle. It was electrifying. Yeah. It was it was very unbiased. It was very anticipated, and it was it was it was a battle that was like. Like, you know how you go to a boxing fight party and all the amateur rookie fights and shit like that in the beginning, niggas is rolling up, niggas yeah. is asking their cousin, yo, who's shorty right there in the corner? Uh, mm -hmm. Then as soon as Floyd Mayweather about to get on versus Pacquiao, niggas yeah. is like, yo, sh yo, yo, chill, yo, hold it, yo, roll the chips up and chill out. Right. Niggas want to see yeah. what's about to go on. Yeah. And I felt like that was the energy in the room with me and Chess. So that's that's definitely why that would probably be like one of my favorite battles. But aside from that, it would um my favorite battle would probably be me versus Ox. Shout out to him. Shout, Shout out to, to Ox. Right. Shout out to Ox. And it would probably only be that because I feel like the level of competition was was there as far as like who wanted to win lyrically. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? To themselves. You get where I'm coming from? Like yeah. you got a lot of people that take the, the the criticism of what they man say or what they team say or what they like that particular battle he wanted to know if he was really better than me and I wanted to prove like nigga I'm really better than you. Yeah. So we gonna write some of the craziest shit because I knew you wanted this for yeah, an overpouring amount of yeah, time. He you for years. And when you want something for a long time and the opportunity is finally presented, 
it's not likely you're going to drop the ball. <laughs> you get where I'm coming from? Yeah, well, you said It's that. not likely you're going to yeah, drop the line, ball. You said, you said, I just going to remain like a loud fool. Some shit. Yeah, <sighs> yeah. Yeah, like I, yeah. I even felt yeah. like I was positioned yeah. in a different space in that battle. Yeah. Because I'm like, nah, even when it's enough, it ain't enough. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I like to come with the second clip, so. Right, right. Shout out mm -hmm. to Ox, man. That was a great mm -hmm. battle, facts. Um, how did you become a part of the hooligans? Or did you and Fresh start that together or some shit? Um, how did I become a part of the hooligans? That's a that's a that's a a, a funny question because before the hooligans really became a group, they were kind of like already a group. I'm not gonna lie. Fresh Moms is, I believe, right now a, a mother of six. I want to say I believe she had three boys three girls or something like that i know it's, it's it's a large family you get what i'm saying okay. so long story short when we was um younger and we was kids and my moms would bring me to fresh fresh mom's house because of like whoever kid parties was going on or whatever yeah i never really participated in the parties like mm -hmm. i was always intrigued at freshen them room right because they was um they they was granted with privileges that living with my moms as a Caribbean moms I didn't have. Got you. you feel got what I'm saying? You. So even though I might have liked these rappers like Fifty Cent and and, and and Beanie Siegel and all of them, I couldn't I could like them. My moms didn't mind me liking them, but I couldn't hang up their posters in my room and all that. So when I went to Fresh Crib and his in their room, it was like walking into a magazine for real. Mm -hmm. Like you seen mad classic clips of like. Rappers that they had up and stories and things that happened to them, 50 getting shot nine times, things they overcame, like shit that made me look into their biography now. Like, oh, sweat, I didn't know that. I just seen this nigga video on MTV. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like yeah, saying yeah, Candy yeah, yeah. Shop. Uh -huh. You feel what I'm saying? So right, it was like, right. they they kind of put me on to like a lot of, looking into a lot of history before time, like before these rappers were popular in the streets of New York City, I kind of already knew about them. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. And then, um, yeah, I think I just came over. I think I just hit them up one time after years and was like, yo, what's up? Because they always used to hear me rap mm -hmm. from these parties. They would be like, yo, what you up? What you be up to? You What you doing in school? You you on a team or try to see if I was going the athletic route? I'll be like, yeah, I'm on a team, but yo, I'll be rapping. Yo, listen to how this sound. And they kept pushing me to do it. So years passed, and then I just called them like, yo, what's up? Um, I heard y'all got a rap. A rap group, cause I think they moms had told my moms about it. Okay. When I was speaking okay. to my moms on the phone, my moms had told me to get in touch with them, that they was doing good and they was going to the studio doing music, and that I should, um, you know, I should partner up with them, cause around that time I was getting in a lot of trouble. I ain't gonna lie, I was in Coney Island, bugging out, not even thinking about the fact that I was good at rapping or none of that, cause none of my friends was really thinking about that. Like yeah. that's really a hood where. Everybody is trying to get it and eat. Like everybody trying to come up. Right, right. See what I'm saying? So it's just like a lot of foul play, crime activity. It's it's tough out there. I ain't gonna lie. No doubt. So I was in a mixture of that. But oh. then I, I I joined them ultimately. I battled a dude named Bam Bam that was a part of the hooligans back in this day and a time, and that was how I got in the group. That was how I became a part of the group. But at that time I was like fourteen and a half. Mm. 15, I think you hit them up a year later. Yeah. I'm 16. Right, right. right. Um, so what's your relationship now with them? I mean, they family. I love them boys, you know what I'm saying? I love them guys, you know, they family. Like, any family event they invite me to, they know that I'm there, you know what I'm saying? Even though with, with certain family members... I'm probably not forgiven in their eyes. You understand what I'm saying? For my history of having a wild past. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. It's 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 probably been times that I'ma say I put people's lives in jeopardy from being gang affiliated. You feel what I'm saying? But in all in all in all in all truthfulness, it wasn't intentional. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Like yeah. even even with you know, the whole brotherhood and knowing steams and all of that. Like, it was a time niggas was young and niggas damn near tried to chase niggas out of Fort Greene. 
do to me red flagging in these areas. You understand know what I'm saying? So, and they were with me. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? So, you know, the ones that's family, family might be like, yo, you know what? That ain't nothing. I know how you is. But the ones that's like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not really that close. It's like, nigga, you could have got me killed, nigga. What the fuck is wrong? Yeah. Yeah, right, no, I mean, right. that type of shit. So <laughs> that's what world, happened. World. That word. My God. Um, how did LOE come about? That's how true it is. All right, let me let me just get straight to it, right? Um, I don't know if it's true to it. And I could be wrong, but I think Carter's told me that LOE kind of came about because you were trying to separate yourself from the hooligans. Yes, yes, okay. indeed. Okay, okay. Yes, indeed. He did not lie about that one hundred percent. He told the truth. Okay. Yes, that's exactly how and why LOE came about. Because in the pattern, in the beginning of We Go Hard, the way things were going was kind of like a, a, a duo thing, whether it seemed that way. But with We Go Hard being a majority-based, like, Brownsville league, Everybody know Brownsville is a projects in Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah. So this particular projects got different projects, and these different projects got beef with each other. So when I come around and we go hard, you probably got two dudes from Tilden. That's T D and Veli. Then you got two dudes probably from the other side of Tilden. That's Fabio and Nico. Right. Then right. you got two dudes from from close to Van Dyke side, which is probably Styles and, and Money. Or or Nate at the time, Nate mm -hmm. the Prince. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to all of them. You understand what I'm saying? These is my brothers that I came up with in this We Go Hard shit. You understand what I'm fact. saying? That's but in that's the beginning fact. of time, that's how things seemed based. So they didn't. So when you in a battle league now, and you know that people could basically call you out on anything, the smartest thing to do is to neutralize and subtract all the faults that could be directed to you that's made amongst others. You get where I'm coming from? And at the time, I felt like I didn't really have a, a a party or a person that was on that level of lyricism with me from the hooligan group until Carter came about. So I say, yo, you know what? The fact that I love music this much and you love music this much, but then we also tie up to a pair on the same level with the battle rap writing, this is what we gonna have to formulate. And we and it's gonna be hard because right now we kind of in the door with these guys, but we ain't from Brownsville yet. We ain't they ain't accept us, accept us yet. You get where I'm coming from? Yeah, yeah. So that means from here on out, uh huh, uh huh, everything yeah. got to get balked on. We no longer coming to rap. That's out of it. We not coming to do that no more. They gonna come and do that, and that's all right. But we going to balk on ears now, you heard? We going we going we going to make sure that niggas know that when them niggas when them niggas names get called in the room, niggas got to be quiet. Cuz them niggas is about to say some of the most amazing shit in the world. And that's just the attitude and the approach we took. Okay. <laughs> you get where I'm coming from? So that's how LOE came. Okay, about. okay. Okay. But yeah, um, it, it it was always like a two on two war thing. It was always a two on two war thing. Yeah. Up until, you know, the levels changed and people no longer wanted to participate in the two on two action. I think Brooklyn Carter and Jay is where it stopped at. Shout out to Jay. Word. That that was where the whole wavy animosity got created. Let me clarify that to the people. Being that it was a two on two war thing after Carter battled Jay. Right. I felt like it was only right that I battled Mr. Wavy, but I'm I'm convinced that at this particular time he felt like nah I don't I don't need to battle you no more because he he probably already caught wind on where his career was going which you know merged to the the highest stage which is the URL stage which I would say and probably a lot of people would agree it merged to that stage very quickly and then after a couple of battles he took his career path onto different things I want to say. Shout out to Mr. Wavy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Another one of the bros, you know, that came up from We Go Hard. Yeah. But that was that was just 
that was just the um the narrative of the way We Go Hard was painted at that time. A word, you, you city, Troy Martin, your brother, yo, yo, Carter, you gonna battle Troy Martin? Mm -hmm. I'm a battle city. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying, yeah, or yeah. vice versa. You right, get right. where I'm coming from. That's that was fact. just That's it, it wasn't. It didn't need to be. It didn't need to be a city phone call. Let me just clarify that. A lot of when when it when it when the pages turned years later, people started to say, "Oh, so how come city ain't booking it then? If it's really worth seeing, and mm -hmm. all of this became a part of the narrative getting painted." Mm -hmm. I'm from a time where city, your phone didn't ring from city. You knew what the next battle was. Yeah. Off the battle you just watched. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Am I lying, City? No, no lies told. But that's why that that may that may be why they say I'm old, which I gotta wear. You know, I gotta wear that. I was here when when it was just pyramids. Yeah. Now we got museums. Right. right. The artifacts is hung up. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know uh -huh. what I'm yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it is what it is. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, no doubt. No we doubt. just had pyramids and camels when I was in yeah. this month. You right. know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. It is what it is. No doubt. Um who are the members of LOE? Because Carter told me to ask you. The members of LOE is everybody tied to me that's in the battle rap family, like that we built ties with. You get where I'm coming from on, on a on a on a on a on a close aspect. You get what I'm saying after years. You get where I'm coming from because LOE is loyalty over everything. So at the end of the day, if I really wanted to subject it to 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 just the few, it would be me, Carter, and Nina, because that's how it started. We was all a part of the the hooligans and us merging out. I wanted to know who was battle rapping. What you doing? You 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 going to the studio? Yeah, I right, you xed out. What you doing? You battle rapping? Nah, you don't really feel like you want to do it. I right, you xed out. What you doing? Cause we the way cause I already told you the approach that we had in mind, we wasn't coming to no longer play. Yeah. So I wanted the people that felt like they wasn't playing, that felt like they had something to prove. You get what I'm saying? Carter felt like he wanted to open up a whole new level of bodies. You know after. Breathing in the tough love, dealing with, I guess, not having reactions so much, sort so of say, in certain battles. Like, with him and Blade Brown, it didn't, if it was a seesaw, it didn't really lean too much on his end as far as reaction goes. And in this sport, that happens. Okay. You get what I'm saying? Nah, I dig it, I dig it, I dig it. I dig it. Um, But LOE would be me, Carter, and Nina on a, on a subjected tip. But on an overall tip, is LOE is 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 LOE, which is that particular team I just named, me, Carter, and Nina. But and Clip and your boy Clip, part of my soul, part of my soul. It, it's it's four of us. It's me, Nina, Carter, and your boy Clip and Polo. You feel what I'm saying? I brung Polo in, so that would be the five that's in LOE right now. But after my Fetty battle. I don't really think I'm gonna be battling too much and we go hard due to where I see the the sportsmanship has grown to. You know what I'm saying? I come from a time when it was like 90% competition and good sportsmanship. And now it's not so much that. And now it's more of like a popularity contest. You get what I'm saying? Like, even though like everybody come to uh, we go hard and get AO'd, you understand what I'm saying? But when if I'm spitting balls and somebody AOing my balls, but at the same time, in the background, I hear people like, nah, that was fire, yo, that was mean. Uh. Then now you just interrupted my footage. You get what I'm saying? Because me still, as a battle rapper, when this footage is released, I want to be able to watch it at home. You know what I'm saying? With my shorty or whoever I'm with mm -hmm. and pinpoint the do's and don'ts. Like, oh, yeah. nah, you see how I let that ball get to me right there? I know not to do that right there. How, how I made that face, I'm not going to do that no more. Oh, when I said that right there, I could say that a little better. You can't dictate that when you don't have a smooth battle of unbiased reactions and you got people in the building that's just being ignorant. You get what I'm saying? And the same thing I said about when you watch, when you had a boxing fight. You get what I'm saying? People okay. know in the beginning that the amateur fights is on. And then when you hear Floyd Mayweather versus Pacquiao, the whole room is quiet. You know why that room is quiet. Because yeah. you know that's a heavyweight fight that's about to happen. Yeah. And it used to be that respect and we go hard. 
versus to the times now where it's no longer that respect. Like niggas don't care who you is, niggas don't care what you got going on, niggas don't care if it's a PG battle, niggas don't care if it's pay-per-view, niggas is just doing whatever they want. Niggas is bringing their girl to the event, niggas is pouring a big, a big cup or buying a bunch of cups from their man that they know gonna give them discounts at the ball or whatever the case may be. And just doing a bunch of ignorance during the battles that's not really a part of the sport that we didn't really participate with doing. You get what I'm saying? We was battling outside where it might have been 60 niggas. And then by the time the end of the first round is over, it's 90 niggas. You like, yo, I'm like, yo, City, yo, these your mans? Yo, what's going on after this? Remember, it was a few, it was a couple battles I had to ask you that. Like, yeah. yo, City, you know what projects? Like, what's up? It, it's mad niggas. It wasn't this much niggas before this battle happened. Right, right. But niggas is in a window like this. Oh, that must be city. That must be, you get what I'm saying? It was something you had to hurry up and put your jeans on to come downstairs and watch. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Versus now where you might say it's $5 to get in and it's not a room full of people. Because niggas ain't, ain't really excited at the level of balls that's being thrown around. You feel what I'm saying? Niggas feel like it's just a jammed up place where everybody that sound like one person. You get what I'm saying? There's no originality. There's no none of that. So. Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. Um, was there anyone that was supposed to be LOE that's not that that didn't fall through? Probably authentic, I want to say. But he kind of fell through, so it's kind of hard to say that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Gang, like, word. Shout out to gang. Okay. Word. He kind of, he kind of, <laughs> word. Like, he the only person that, because he went, all right, I'm going to put it like this. Around the time when Authentic, when I seen the special pen that Authentic had, I was in a, in a, in a, in a real, kind of touchy space with battle rap. You understand? So even though I was presenting the position the an opportunity to him, like, yo, come over here and rock with us, I didn't even know if I still wanted to rock with battle rap. You get where I'm coming from? But mm -hmm. neither here nor there. I did present it to him, and he did jack it. Like, yeah, he definitely wore it on his sleeve. Like, ah, right, yeah, bet. I'm LOE. Yeah, I'm, I'm rocking with y'all. You get what I'm saying? And mighty, you might even see a couple of his battles that you might be able to type up where he shouted us out. I don't wanna, I don't want people to watch the interview and be like, yo, what? He lying, he bugging. I'm not a hundred percent confident on that. But you know, just speaking on the man to man to pause, he never we never had no issues or I never had no static with, with um authentic or anything like that. Like he okay. he, he, he 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 came into we go hard and he he put his he put his numbers up. All right, no doubt. I bet. Did anybody try to get you to be a part of their team? Um, nah. Um, nah. Nobody ever tried to get me to be a part Nobody. of their team. Nah. Okay. So you from Coney Island, right? Yeah. Not Besta. No, I'm not from Best. Well, I was born in the Star, okay. but I was raised in Coney Island. Got you. Got yeah. you. Okay. Okay. Just wanted to make sure of that. Let me ask you this, right? You was raised in Coney Island. Mm-hmm. Because this is my first time like actually hearing this shit, and I, I, I fuck with Coney Island heavy. I've been in Coney Island, did all kind of behind the scenes videos, interviews, all kind of shit, right? Is it true that Coney Island niggas don't say they from Brooklyn? They from Coney Island? Because you know how Far Rock niggas is from... Far Rockaway is Queens, right? Yeah. But niggas, no, I'm not from Queens. I'm from Far Rockaway. So Coney Island niggas, I'm, like, I'm not from Brooklyn. I'm from Coney Island. Nah, we, 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 we represent it all in the same fold, but we just put Coney Island on a... On a... On a... On a on the front 
on a front line in front of Brooklyn. I'm going to say that. Okay, okay. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. We just put it on the front line. Like, if you was to ask us, anybody from out there, where we from, we always say, I'm from Coney Island. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, because like, yeah, one nigga. So I, that's why it appears that way. Yeah, because one nigga, I'm like, yo, you from Brooklyn? Like, right? right? nah, I'm from Coney Island. I'm like, all right. <laughs> yeah, he's like, nah, I'm not from Brooklyn, I'm from Coney Island. I'm like, nah, Coney Island is definitely considered Brooklyn. I mean, of course, I know that, but he yeah. he made it seem like, nah, it's like separate, because, you know, Far Rockaway is Queens, Harlem's Madden. So he made it seem like, nah, I'm from. It's okay. And I, and I, and I kind of left it at that. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. Um, my fault, my fault. Did you start the forefathers? No. Who the fuck started this shit, bro? Because I asked money. He told me, don't you start this shit off? I'm trying. Who popped this shit off? Do you know? Um, I think it it started as a question, but between like between. Fans? Like around the same time when um, what you call that thing with the um, with the faces? Oh, uh, Mount Rushmore. Right, around the time when the URL talk began with the with the Mount Rushmore and all of that. You know, of course, everybody know we go hard had a chat at this time, and I was I participated in the chat in the chat a lot more then. Versus what I do now, of course, I, I'm a lot older. I grew up in age. But when we was talking about it then, the conversation from the Mount Rushmore on URL kind of just merged to We Go Hard. And I was like, yo, we don't, we don't, we don't imitate anything that they got going on. Right, you know right. what I'm saying? Like, we got four fathers, but we don't really need a, a we don't really need a Mount, a Mount Rushmore because we more like a family over here. <clears throat> And that's always how I, how I wanted, we go hard to kind of be presented. Even though now I'm kind of looked at like to be old, washed up, out the picture. That's a right for me. You get what I'm saying? Like real, real shit, city. That's that's okay for me because I don't mind knowing that things elevated from the way it was structured from the time that I'm from. You get what I'm saying? Like, it's like, it's like, yeah, even though they say real recognize real, the flip side to that coin was 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 displayed in We Go Hard. <laughs> you get where I'm coming from? Mm-hmm. In my time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. around the time that I'm from We Go Hard, real recognize real. You get what I'm saying? If you was real, you ain't really have no problems. You get where I'm coming from? If you wasn't real, you might have lost the tooth. You might have got punched in the face. You might have had your jaw broken. If you was interrupting somebody battle too much, you might have got punched during the battle. You get what I'm saying? If you said something crazy to a female that was a part of a, a certain team and you're not even a battle rapper, like you paid your money at the door to just watch, and you arguing with somebody that's defending somebody that that's that that's on a team that they're a part of, and it is a female, and you're a whole dude, you might get beat up and punched in the face. So I'm from when we go hard, had the discipline and respect. They don't got that now. Now you could just do anything. Like everybody that 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 would have that would have been eager to display that form of punishment. Is living on, on a way better scale in life now, mm-hmm. and I'm proud of that. You understand what I'm saying? So yeah. it kind of make me feel like the peers coming up now are mad about that. Like, like they're mad that we still not the security guard at Family Dollar. Like, mm-hmm. or they're mad that we don't wear dirty jeans and dirty sneakers and hold a door open, panhandling at the liquor store. Like, I feel like they're mad. <laughs> I feel like they're mad about that because it's like what y'all expected to happen. Like we all had to grow up, get jobs, be able to get money, provide for our family, our kids, pay rent. So nobody really got time to be chasing y'all down for every SMD you decide to throw or 
You get what I'm saying? Or every time you decide to interrupt the battle, or uh, you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You might still get called out on it, though. Yeah, facts, facts. You get what I'm saying? By these same individuals, KO, Money, Dougie, all these individuals that's that's good guys. We we good guys. You get what I'm saying? We not outside flagging, shoelaces with beads on them, trying to represent being no, nah, you get what I'm saying? Big Meech or Tookie Williams, we not, we not doing that. But we we definitely standing on respect. You get what I'm saying? But to have to pay homage to the disrespect on the flip side every time it's, it's being thrown around now, you'll never make it to, to Sunday. From Sunday to Sunday, you'll never make it. You get what I'm saying? Like you'll just be in a in a in a wrestling match every time you turn around. Cause it's like, you get what I'm saying? Like it's just always something with these former individuals when at the same time. I right, whoever's the battle rappers, right? Shout out to all battle rappers, cause y'all actually have a talent that y'all are showing the world. But to the people that's that I was basically re referring to, right? That's interrupting the footage, that's doing all of that extra stuff, saying the aos and making the noise and all of that in the during the battles, interrupting it and all of that. You get what I'm saying? It's like what what do you do? You get what I'm saying? Show me, show me what your talents are. You get what I'm saying? Like, let me, oh, you do tattoos? Let me see your tattoo book. Oh, you draw? Let me see what your drawing portfolio looks like. You get what I'm saying? Like, like what, what do you do? Like, what's your talent for somebody to critique? You don't have one. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? So that's that's what a lot of the battle rap pairs today is 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 filled with and the things outside of battle rap display that like shout out to my peers like when we was not all but a lot of us like when we was battle rappers you could still also see like I right, if he don't want to rap he could probably do this or do something else you get what I'm saying or you had me like mm -hmm. I actually took pride in putting on good outfits and coming to events. You feel me? I did it all the time when I would go out to parties, clubs. Feel me? Just a regular New York City thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is how years later I drop a clothing line. You get what I'm saying? You got dudes like money on all streaming platforms. You get what I'm saying? You got dudes like presidential dubs, all streaming platforms, music videos. You got dudes like your boy Clip. He done shot for Fab. He done shot for him. He done shot for Jim Jones. He done... That's other talents outside yeah. of, you get where I'm coming from? Outside of battle rap. And I've been trying to tell people that shit too, bro. You got dudes like Polo, shout out to him. He got the white rhino part. He threw, he threw a, a, his whole own league in his whole own different way. Yeah. And invited people from his league to come. Even though from the beginning, as I said, the same peers from this time hated on it. Like how you, like how you hating on this man wanting to do his own thing? And he's actually putting his peers from the goats that he from the goats that he learned from. He's involving his peers to be a part of that. How you? How you? What would make you want to look at that man and hate on that? But that's his. That's for you know what I mean. Whenever yeah. you interview him, the, yeah. I just got you know what I'm saying. It's two sides to every story, so Absolutely. I just got his side right. and how he felt, and I basically explained the same thing. Like you know, with times changing. That's the way things are now. People just only have the battle rap talent or only have that person that they idolize in, in battle rap that they want to sound like. <laughs> you hear where I'm coming from? Yeah. In the beginning, it wasn't no imitations to idol. And we go hard because we was the beginning. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I ain't know about TD till I battled him. Mm -hmm. I ain't really know about Fabio till I battled him. Right. I didn't. Feel me? And so on. Carter didn't know about a lot of these people till he battled them. Clip yeah. ain't know about these people till he battled them. Right, right. So that's how that went. Yeah. So and, and, so you consider the four falls to be just your peers? Nah, I consider it to be mo like most of the dudes that you had on your birthday card. Money, Kid Rock, Brooklyn Carter, Steams, I would say. And me. Okay. You get what I'm saying? I would say Piffy P too. I would say Piffy P too. Shout out to him. 
one of the first dudes in We Go Hard to battle in treacherous weathers. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Before projects. dudes was getting credit for battling in the rain. That boy battled in hail, in hail snow. Hell Shout yeah. out to um Piffy and Styles. In cold weather, that's a fact. That's a, that's a big fact. That's a big fact. You know what I'm saying? All right, cool. So let me, let's, all right. There's another battle rapper named K.O. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Some nigga named K.O. from PA. He, he actually, came to We Go Hard. He battled We Go Hard one time. Yeah, I was there. Okay, I was okay. there, I was there, I was there. So was there. How, how did you feel about that? Um, I felt real cool about it. To, it, it, it. I felt at ease about it alone... Just alone due to the fact that he was coming to We Go Hard to rap. And it appeared really like nobody really knew him. So me being from Brooklyn and knowing how lit Brooklyn is, if nobody don't know you here, you not that guy. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, this is, we took the Nets from Jersey. This is that place. Mm-hmm. You got to be, we got to know you here. We have to know you here. So when he came to We Go Hard, nobody really knew him. I was like, all right, whatever then. I'm like, yo, I believe Jazz the Rapper was there. You get what I'm saying? And, you know, she's she's really a goat in her own in her own, in her yeah. own stature. Right. So not to say I, I took a lot of her opinion about it, but she leaned to me and was like, his name K.O.? I thought you was K.O. Wait, so both of y'all named K.O.? Uh-huh. I say, yo, listen... <laughs> I say, yo, listen, Jazz, I done battled other KOs for this name. And if he on We Go Hard, he obviously battling the wrong person. Because there's no way you come into We Go Hard and you don't know who KO is. That yeah. don't even make no sense. Yeah. So that's like if I'm going to that's like if I'm going to PA, right? And the name of this battle is called Fight Club Arena, right? And I know I spoke to the league owner at Fight Club Arena in PA. Now I'm typing that in on YouTube. And nobody can't say that that this wasn't something that was known of you to do at that time. When he came, what year was that that he came to We Go Hard? Shit, that was like probably around like 15, 16. Exactly. Somewhere around. And this time, 15, 16, YouTube was, YouTube was it. It wasn't yeah. even a power discuss really yet in this era of time. So you was typing in that battle league <laughs> mm-hmm. to watch to watch a few of those High viewed battles from over there to see a few of the characters. So if I know I'm coming to We Go Hard and I'm looking at the characters and I see a dude named Kale, oh sweat, he battled chess. Oh, he battled Steams too. Oh, sweat, who this guy? Oh, Brooklyn Carter. I right, I see I seen this light skinned dude behind him. Oh, they so they must be a part of the same team. Oh, I right. yo, when I get to We Go Hard, I'm a I wanna battle KO. That's how I'm approaching it. Right. I don't I'm not coming over there to battle nobody else and a dude over there got my name. Even though I don't know how that battle was set up, I'm not into the battle rap politics. He got his shot here. Yeah. He came. I, I believe he did well. Yeah, it was, it was a cool battle. It was a cool battle. Yeah, I, I ain't cool going to say it was it was super dirt. Yeah, I, I yeah, believe yeah. me and Jazz stood there yeah, and watched it. Was, it. Yeah, it was a regular card. It wasn't nothing, wasn't yeah, nothing too I crazy. Believe, I believe me and Jazz post? stood there. And, yeah, yeah, we stood there and watched yeah, it. it was, yeah, it wasn't nothing. Because I remember, I, I remember watching that battle, like looking at the comments, and like, who the fuck is this KO nigga? Like, you know, because you know, we got all fans like, yo, KO? Like, this, like, Y'all yeah. Crying. Yeah, bro, I remember that shit. Oh, yeah, that's a fact. Yeah, shout out to him though, man. Shout out to KO, man, from PA. Or no doubt. All right, so um, you got a son, right? I do have a son. One one kid, right? One son, yes. So how does it feel to be a father? Oh man, it's a real. It's a tough. It's a tough subject to touch on, you know, when especially when you like going through a breakup with the mother of your child. Because, you know, it's females out there that, you know, tend to keep you away from your kid at times. But, mm-hmm. you know, if you're a sharp man, you're going you gonna to do everything that you know to do yeah. to see your kid. So, to be a father is great. I ain't going to lie. It feels great. You feel wonder- wonderful. You're always in a space to where, like, you feel like you got a best friend where you never really going to feel bored. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. regardless if you got brothers or not, because I got brothers, you get what I'm saying? But seeing your own, 
imitation and seeing somebody that resemble you, somebody that move like you and do the things that you do and, and could show you some of the ways that you had when you was that age, that's like some of the, that's the most beautiful thing like to see in the world. Cause I, I got anxiety. Like that's why I don't know if you could tell I, I move my legs a lot, even with, if yeah, I'm shooting yeah, the interview yeah. Yeah, or all that of too, that. Bro. I do that too. Yeah, I got, I got a, a small portion of anxiety and I see that in him too sometimes with like trying to go to sleep, he'll rock himself back and forth uh, all the way until he fall asleep. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? Usually some kids, they do it, they stop. He <laughs> do it all the way until he fall asleep. Sometimes I do it, I do it too if I feel comfortable. Yeah. Then that's how, I'm, you know what I'm saying? That's how I rock out. Right. How how old, how old is your little man now? My son is four years old now. Four? That's what's up, man. Yeah. God bless, man. God bless. Do you have issues with any battle rappers? Hmm. Or do bat or do any battle rappers got issues with you? I'ma be honest. <laughs> I'ma be a hundred percent honest. And I'ma be straightforward. I don't have issues with no man in battle rap. Whatsoever. None. Nada, any, zilch. But it is a few dudes that I dislike, and um, and I'm sure that I'm sure they know statements that they made is a part of the reason why. Right. You understand know what I'm saying? Right. <clears throat> but you know, people could say whatever. You get what I'm saying? Just. When when a person says something to me, to make that that would make the average person dislike them, regardless or not, if it make me dislike them, it's still I'm still grown enough to a level to to know that they just don't really understand. You get what I'm saying? That's why they're making this statement or or speaking at this level of respect because they just don't understand. You get what I'm saying? They don't. They don't understand how to carry things out the other way. And there's a lot of battle rappers that's like that. And they not even, and it's crazy because they not even 10 toes on being behind that. <clears throat> you get what I'm saying? Like, like if if we sitting down right now and I say, yo, you know what? I don't I don't like you. Uh, I think this about you. I think that about you. Uh, and you sitting across right there, and you like, um, all right, well, send your address. Why am I not sending my address to you? If I feel if I feel this type of way about you, you get what I'm saying? Right. It should be like, all right, let's handle this as men, and that's it. But I don't know if I don't know if somewhere down the, and I, nah, that's a lot. I can't even put. I'm not even gonna put that out there. Some of these dudes know that whomever the person might be that's gonna say your senior address, they not coming with nobody. I could name a bunch of people. That I'm confident for for a fact that if there's any type of issue in battle rap and and you send an address to them, they send an address to you, they not coming with nobody. I can name a few people that that's really on it like that. Like they just they really with that. Like they believe, they believe that we could get it on, pause, we could fight. I mean and fight. We could fight out, fight it out as men. Mm -hmm. You gotta say that. See, like being being yeah. around, we go hard so much is why even in the interview, you gotta say pause to everything. Like yeah. cause it's like it's like these dudes just sit back and and just word hunt. Yeah. Yo, I'ma hunt out any word that sounds close to if he says wet, I'ma hey yo. Uh, yeah. If he say yo, I'm feeling wild moody, hey yo, you what you yeah. moody about? Like yeah. it's so Yeah, man. It's right. no way. City, you my man, it's a hundred grand. You know I love you know the facts. and I support <laughs> yeah. anything in life that you got going on. Mm -hmm. right, At thirty one years old, I can't. That's that's a daycare. <laughs> you get where I'm coming from? Yeah. At 31 years old, that's a daycare. And, it, and what's sad is, I know that these ain't even your mans. So I can't even say, yo, bro, it. and if these are your mans and you care about your business, try to tell them, like, yo, leave all that child display at home. Like, 
You don't care about this. <laughs> they think you do. Mm. I'm here at this, I'm here at this interview to let them know. <laughs> what I want to look at the camera what I said. City don't care about y'all. He don't. He don't. And if y'all if y'all want to if y'all feel like this is coming from the horse's mouth cuz his job is to not really tell y'all. That that is his job. His job is to not say the inner feelings. But if y'all want to hear it from the horse's mouth, city don't really care about y'all. I'm I say that excluding the the people from my era. These new era battle rappers, city don't care about y'all. He don't he don't care that y'all childish. He don't care that y'all come to the events. Girlfriends be ugly, sneakers be dirty, clothes be wrinkled. He don't care. This man getting paid off y'all. You get where I'm coming from? Like that's the crazy part. It's like it's just like y'all y'all disrespectful, but then when it come down to the fighting part, y'all not willing to stand behind that. So why be disrespectful? I'm a man that's willing to to stand behind. <laughs> Whoever want to fight me, I'm not disrespectful to you guys. I don't, you know what I'm saying? Somebody pointed that out to me too. I had to call somebody out on it. I ain't going to reveal their name. That's neither here nor there. But mm -hmm. this is what I'm getting at. People may tend to come to We Go Hard and they may see all of the vets heckling during certain battles. So now once they feel comfortable, they feel like, oh, all right, I'm going to start heckling. That's what everybody do. They Niggas, niggas don't care. Niggas pick whatever battle they want to do it in. So now a nigga feel like it's, it's, it's playing favorites. Now a nigga feel like we go hard is playing favorites. Or a nigga try to paint that narrative. Let me, let me be here to explain this to the world. We go hard wasn't ever like that. You get what I'm saying? We go hard was even like that to dudes like me. When you come over there, you got to demand just respect in the room. Mm -hmm. You get where I'm coming from? If you come over there and you don't demand your respect in the room, niggas ain't going to just be quiet or stop their conversations. Or It wasn't never like that. Yeah. Especially not from niggas battling outside, cars passing, trains going by. Right. You get what I'm saying? You Man, better have a volume. That's a fact. So it's a lot of dudes that that's probably troubled behind their peers not having a volume. So, so now because your pet, the whoever was battle rapping as a part of your team, now because he ain't have a volume and you heard certain other side conversations or whatever going on in the back, you feel like that's everybody that's a part of We Go Hard that was heckling your mans or whatever the case may be. Nah, it's not that. And I even had to break that down to the person that I called out on it. Like, yo, listen, bro. Listen, dogs. It's, this not You can't paint that narrative to me. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Even though we go hard, do do heckling, when the heavyweight battles come on, niggas is unbiased. Niggas is going to let that battle happen. If you if a person say something that is an AO and you do hear the reaction of AO, that's agreed upon between the whole we go hard. You get what I'm saying? Everybody, even city be laughing like, "Nah, that was crazy. I ain't yeah, going to lie. That was a little shit crazy." Be crazy sometimes. You get where I'm coming from? But when there's eight people over here, hey yo, hey yo, hey, like, like trying to increase it by their team, then there's seven people over here, like, nah, that was fire. Yo, that was crazy. Nah, that was fire. Yo, what they talking about? That was a mean ball right there. You just interrupting that man footage, boy. Why you doing that? Like, why you doing that, bro? You can't, you paid to watch that man. Yeah. Why you in the battle doing that? Yeah. That's a lot of the OO team. I just want to put that out there, being that we at this interview, because it may be people that's watching We Go Hard right now. That's like, yo, you know what? I want to come over there and battle, but I can't really tell what's going on. Like sometimes it seems like people be playing favorites, or sometimes it seems like it's best to go with the team that's the deepest. Go with being you. That's the advice I want to give anybody that come over here. Because that's the advice I gave all my peers. And they became great. These dudes is great battle rappers. I say, yo, just be you. I don't care what nobody talking about, bro. You you got, you fire. Be you. Ask around. If you do an interview, call the clip. Ask them what advice KO gave them. I say, yo, be you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's it. These dudes, this the way the way things is wrapped up today, it ain't.
it ain't that, man. It's a lot of wannabes. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? No, I dig it. I dig it. All right. Um, you know, people, you know, people still say ish is the face of battle rap. And you battle ish. So right. how did you feel about that battle? Um, I feel like the battle with me and Ish was great. I would have loved for it to be three rounds, but I feel like it was a great battle. I bodied him. Shout out to Ish. And, uh, you know, I don't think that that took anything away from him being a face. Ish is a great battle rapper, fantastic writer, good father to his kids, good family, man. Get what I'm saying? Like, one of the most stand-up dudes you probably could come across in battle rap. You get what I'm saying? Like, you know what I'm saying? And it's so crazy. Like, even it's the type of person that if you catch him being biased, he going to admit it. He going to say, ah, I ain't going to lie. I was a little biased. (laughs) You get what I'm saying? Like, you don't meet those type of dudes in life. Mm -hmm. These dudes around battle rap today, you tell them they, they being biased, they'll know that they was being biased. They ain't going to admit it. Nah, bro. He, I still think he won. <laughs> you heard? Even with even with it being personal. You, you understand where I'm coming from? Like, just you and just them. <laughs> you understand where I'm coming from? Ish not that kind of guy. You heard? I promise you. Anybody bumping an Ish on a one-on-one. He's going to keep it real with you. He's not going to really... You get what I'm saying? Yeah. He's going to give you the real opinion. Even if you start... Breaking down on why you feel like your opinion is this way, he'd be like, nah, I ain't gonna lie. You nah, you right, that did happen. Or XYZ, nah, I see what you're saying. You know what I'm you know what I'm saying? I, or I see why you would lean to your opinion your opinion being that. You understand where I'm coming from? These it's just it's just more real. You could tell when it's genuine. Yeah. I'm gonna say that. You could just tell when it's genuine. Right. Well, shout out to that battle though. Go check that out. Kale versus ish. Uh-huh. That's a fact. Check that out. It's Check a that candle out. Candle lighting, man. No doubt. Toilet bowl. Shout out to the toilet bowl. Man. <laughs> they allowed me to put that under my belt. Nah, that's a fact. That's a fact. All right, let's talk about your recent battle on week all TV versus Fetty Chi and Tony. How did you feel about that battle? My recent battle versus Fetty, I feel like it was dope. As far as me and him goes, I feel like it was a battle that that needed to happen <laughs> because. Of course, when I battled Ish, I had, I don't, I don't know if I had over four balls about him, about Fetty in my round, because me versus Ish was a one-round battle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But I know for, for a fact that I threw a shot at him, which is something popular in battle rap anyway. All the time. It's like All if you time. battling a, a, a top dude, and if somebody battling Surf, they going to throw a shot at Rock. If you battling Rock, you going to throw a shot at Surf. If you battling Mook, you going to shoot at Rex. If you battling Rex, you going to shoot. So once that... You know what I'm saying? Um, partner in crime status is built between two dude, two dudes, and, and and you battling one of them, the other dude gonna get shot at. That's the way this thing go around here. So, yeah. I believe for me shooting at him, and him saying in my battle with Ish, like Yo, I'ma smoke you, I will smoke you. I feel like the battle was just something that you know it needed to happen. And you know, shout out to him for being a man and allowing it to happen. But I do feel like dudes got to stop being scared. And I feel like I say that because, like, I got dudes that came up to me after the battle and was like, yo, KO, son, yo, you cheated us, man. How come every other battle on, <laughs> on the card was three rounds? Niggas doing three rounds. You and Fetty was only one round. I'm like, yo, look, man. <laughs> you think I ain't want it to be three rounds? I enjoy writing. This is what I enjoy doing. Mm-hmm. That's what confuses the science with them. If this is what y'all love doing, y'all have so many of these battles, how come when it come down to the battles that y'all know people want to see three rounds in, y'all only giving them one round? Y'all cheating the fans. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Y'all cheating the fans. I'm here to say that on camera. Whoever watched the KO battle and wanted it to be three rounds, guess what, y'all? I wanted it to be three rounds, too. But unfortunately, when you when you in an agreement and you trying to arrange a contract and just settle getting things locked in and finalized, <laughs> things happen that way. I dig it. I dig it. So you and Fetty, y'all cool? Y'all good? Yeah, I don't got no um 
no issues with Fetty whatsoever. Okay. Even though a lot of my men's was like, yo, bro, you kind of wowed out um, saying that he, he he cheated on his wife in his face off. I could state this in the interview as well. Um, for one, I'm definitely familiar with that relationship because at the time, in the beginning, when Fetty and Shuni got together, I was aware of the history already between Fetty and Farah. And Fetty was, you know, as a friend, had moved in, rented his own room in my crib. You understand what I'm saying? And and, and, and fed me the knowledge, like, yo, you know, as a man, you know, my, my one tools is going to come over here. My, my, my girl, I don't want to say his one tools on camera to make it seem like he had a bunch of women flooding through my household. Nah, Fetty was a, he was a stand-up dude. He mm -hmm. said, yo, I, I, you might know my girl. I, I, I. Her name's Shuni, you know, from, from Battle Rapper. I'm like, yeah, I know Shuni, man. I, I, she fired, nigga. Like, around this time, Shuni had the tech. She was tag team battling with Farrah, like, su super popular. Like, it was no way you didn't know, know who, who the hell Shuni the Rapper was. You get what I'm saying? Aside from that, you get where I'm coming from? I'm right. just saying, aside from that, with a strong emphasis on it and a way for the world and whoever's viewing this to know that you got a lot of you got a lot of dudes that would have just been really weird around that time. Yeah. You get where I'm coming from? Mm -hmm. And I'm saying that in a confident space to say like both Fetty and Shuni already knew without a shadow of a doubt that I wasn't a weird nigga. Mm -hmm. You get where I'm coming from? Even though, like, not go to say, Shuni is a beautiful woman. You heard beautiful. I was, I never was on no shit like the shower turned off. I'm in the living room like this, yo. Let me turn the TV off. So when she walk, when she walk out, I'm like, you know what I'm saying? On some like over admiring type shit. Even though this is damn near star. Like on the outside world, people look at us like stars. You get yeah. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Some of us that probably be looked at as stars in the eyes of other people look at our peers. As stars. You get what I'm saying? I look at Carter as a star. Right. I look at Clip as a star. You get where I'm coming from? But I, I'm just, I just don't come from that, bro. You understand where I'm coming from, City? I wasn't raised to where you turn your back, you go in the kitchen to answer the phone call, and you can't trust your, your, your wife in the living room with me. You can't trust your girl in the living room with me. You get where I'm coming from? You not home and I'm and I'm knocking on your door. Your shorty through the door, like, nah, city not home. And I'm like this, yo, yeah, you got some paper? You got some paper? I was trying to roll up. I'm not, I'm I don't you get where I'm coming from? My I just I go to sleep at night knowing I'm genuine, bro. You get what I'm saying? Knowing that I'm real. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? I just say that to say that when they when they when, when they had whatever business that they had, it was never spread amongst me. I never pillow talk between them. You get what I'm saying? I don't have no bad blood between Fetty or Shuni. You heard? I, I'm happy for them. I'm happy for their unity. And I, I want. I wish them success, nigga. That's black love right there, nigga. Yeah, that's <laughs> you get what I'm going from? That's a fact. Oh. That's a fact. So what's your thoughts on battle rap back then and now? Like. Um, business. The business is a lot. Is a lot different. That's that's my thoughts, and along with the business being different, I want to say it's a good thing because it make battle rap a lot safer. <laughs> yeah, you get what I'm saying. Like, so anybody at home, <laughs> you get what I'm saying, that's inquiring, coming to an event, or or that or that might have seen the altercation between Chess and Rex. Even though we could get into that, if you want to get into that not really get into it, but just discuss that amongst battle rap and amongst the the heckling and 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 dudes that, that's men getting into it. You feel what I'm saying? I feel like if you got a face off, if a face off already happened, there's no reason why that on game day something should go down. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. But in today's world in battle rap, you see that a lot. But regardless if you see something go down to where two dudes look like they're about to fight, Battle rap is safe today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Shout out to shout out to B City. Shout out to dudes like Smack. <laughs> shout out to No Mercy. Even though, you know, certain dudes is we in the hood like Chinese wings. But right. for the most part, it's safe, man. He's 
just the world period is safe. You get where I'm coming from? It's, a, it's, a, it's more cameras around. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? But again, like I said, just because a certain dude may grow up, you get what I'm saying? Or work a certain job, you feel what I'm saying? That don't goes to say that if they feel disrespected, they still won't pop up, pop the bottle. You feel me? Shout the Rex. You feel me? Regardless if he did it, didn't, didn't, would it, regardless if he did pop, didn't pop, you get what I'm saying? I still want to say shout out to him for letting the world still be able to see that in your feelings. <laughs> you get where I'm coming from? Because we still outside. You get where I'm coming from? We not, we not fad in gym. You get what I'm saying where I'm coming from? We not, we, you get where I'm coming from? We not them people. You know, we not Kanye. Mm -hmm. We ain't Jay-Z. We ain't, we, if, if the world watching battle rap and y'all think we sitting in those meetings, nah, homie, you might bump yeah. into us in your neighborhood, family yeah. dollar, or supermarket grocery store, <laughs> you facts, heard? Facts, facts, facts. Not a lot of us. Like, as I said, not a lot of, because even the time when I started battle, when, when I was in the beginning of my career battle rapping, I bumped into so many people outside that, that would say, yo, how come I never see this person outside? Or how come this person say he from Brooklyn and I never seen him outside before? Like, I see you everywhere that's like a local area to be. You get what I'm saying? And and that's and that's that's just as far as places that's looked at as a staple now in Brooklyn. Like you could bump back, you could bump into KO at the Barclays. I'm a I'm a Brooklyn, New York fan. If the Knicks playing, you could bump into KO. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. At the Garden, at the Barclays, or wherever. If it's a hot day in Coney Island, you could bump into KO. Even Lance Stevenson. You get where I'm coming from? Like it's certain people that still be outside. You get what I'm saying? That still pay homage to New York and still not they may not do it a lot. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? But it's a lot of battle rappers that got known from We Go Hard that people never bumped into. And would ask dudes like me where they be at. They around, I guess, in the crib, yeah. <laughs> playing a video game or whatever they doing, you heard? Mm -hmm. I just, mm -hmm. I always was outside in, in staple places in New York, you heard? I'm not saying you gonna bump into me everywhere, everywhere, you yeah. know what I mean? Every part of the trenches and in the hood, but those places that everybody is at, I be there. You know what I'm saying? Summer jams, this, that, I be there. No doubt. Popular man. studios, I be mm -hmm. there. Quad, I be there. No doubt, no doubt. Um, how did you feel about your URL battle versus Gwitty? And why did you feel like it didn't drop on the URL page? Man. I felt excited. Of course I felt excited. I'm like, what? I'm about to battle on the URL. I don't care if it's a PG or not. We in there. Yeah. Which would have been anybody mindset around this yeah. particular time. You get what I'm saying? Right, but right. another thing, as you know, which probably a lot of my peers probably don't really know, I always wanted, when I first started in We Go Hard, I just wanted We Go Hard to be something that was mentioned right next to Smack. You don't remember that city in the beginning? Yeah, hell yeah. I say, yo, city, you think after like a couple years, like they had mentioned us in the same conversation with Smack? I still I still remember both our eyes looking in the sky like this. <laughs> like, I don't know, maybe one day. You heard? Just gotta work hard. Gangster, you heard? Looking yeah. in the sky like this. I don't know, man. Maybe one day, man. But yo, you. You, you ain't lying. You gonna come battle TD, right? <laughs> I'm looking back at you like, yeah, I'm gonna come. You know yeah. that's a lot of stops, right? Yeah, I ain't lying. I can lie. I can lie. I'm like, I, at first, I thought you was gonna pull up. I'm like, listen, game. Hey, yo, first, man. Hey, I'm not hit no fresh and shit. I'm like, yo, like, all right, cool. Hey, you know what's crazy? I always kind of like talk to people about that because it make me laugh when people say, yo, we go hard your home, man. We Go Hard is my home, but even being introduced to We Go Hard, We Go Hard always knew that I was from Coney Island. Yeah, facts. You get what I'm saying? Facts. And as I said, people that really been through it out there, 
tend to wear Coney Allen on their sleeves. You get what I'm saying? Like, I, I've, I've been through a lot out there. I, I put people through a lot out there. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. I wear Coney Allen on my sleeves. But at the same time, nobody ever really give me credit for that. Like, every battle KO ever had in We Go Hard was an away game. That was a that was a teenage, a teenager, a teenage child. Matter of fact, and when I when I was sixteen, of course, I'm still living with my moms. When I battle TD, I still got moms' rules to abide by and got to yeah. be in the crib by eleven thirty mm -hmm. before midnight and all that wild stuff. You understand? So that's a lot of stops. Coney Allen is the last stop. Yeah. On every train. That's a fact. You heard? That's a fact. On the N, on the Q, uh -huh. on the D, uh -huh. on the F. Right. Stillwell Avenue is the last stop. You heard? And not only that, if anybody ever went further than an amusement park in Coney Island, then you would know that when you get off that train, you see like you see a certain portion of numbers start. I guess it start from like West 11th or something like that. West 11th, West 12th. Which is like right in the back where you where you hear them say, Welcome to El Dorado. Bump, bump, bump your ass with the bumper cars and all of that, where you hear the speakers and all of that, mm -hmm. and you start to hear the music. That's like on if you was on Mermaid, because Coney Island goes along the surf, the yeah. surf avenue right. side. But if you're on Mer on the Mermaid side, that would probably be considered like West Eleventh or West Twelfth or something like that. So as far as the more you go back into the hood part of Coney Island, the numbers rise up. So you see West 16th, West 18th. Then you see West West 19th, West 20th. When you see West 21st, West 22nd, West 23rd, West 24th. Then in between that is like West 25th. It goes straight to like West 27th in Mermaid. Mm -hmm. Then you at West 28th in Mermaid, West 29th, yeah. 30th. I'm all the way in the back. I was all the way on West 36th. You heard? You got to take a bus from where I live to the train. So I got to take a bus to the train to this side of town. Now I'm in We Go Hard. And I did that at least eight, nine battles. Hmm. Damn. So that's never really considered a home, home game. game. Right. <laughs> you yeah, get what I'm coming from? Right. That's considered a away game. Right. I had one battle that was considered a home game. Shout out to Danger. Um, um, yeah, shout out to Danger, shout out to Aura. I was supposed to battle Aura in the book in the Brooklyn Mike Club. So happens that when I went out there, he didn't make it, he didn't make it to the event. I ended up battling Danger, who's from Coney Island also. You shout understand what I'm saying? Shout out to Danger from Coney Island. So it's like, that's probably the only battle on my resume that I had that was a home game. That was on the league, right. because that was in the Brooklyn Mike Club. Right. Even though I always had scrimmage games against some of the top dogs from out there. Um, me and Fight Fire Kid used to scrimmage, and he spit a 16, I'm going to spit a 16, and we're going to go back and forth. Me and Cream used to do the same thing. Shout out to Cream. Me and my my, my bro Knox Man used to do the same thing. Shout out to Knox Man. You, you get where I'm coming from? Mm -hmm. So a lot of the top dogs that was rappers in Coney Island, shout out to Stash. Right. You know, we, we used to just spar. What, right. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't really battles, but you know how it go. Like we outside in Coney Island, we 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 right there next to the water where it's chisel around this time. We shout out shout out to us. We in December right now, but around this time in Coney Island, shout out to Coney Island. It's like probably below two degrees right now. Niggas is still outside. The trappers are still. You know what I mean, family still got to eat. Kids still got to get fed. You heard so. Yeah. I mean, Coney Island. Yeah, we was we was really on that rapping outside, yeah. breaking day. No doubt. Uh, speaking of Coney Island, mm -hmm. you know, Bro uh, Brooklyn Mike Club is a Coney Island league. Well, Facts. Like, did you ever thought about being a part of Brooklyn Mike Club, or did it, the situation did the situation ever come your way of being BMC Brooklyn Mike Club? Um, the situation definitely came my way a few times. A few times. Um, shout out to Gwitty. He's a um. You know, Gwitty is one of those dudes that that eat, sleep, battle rap, and music both at the same time. Like, love being in the studio, love being around the environment of bars and real rap and the, the hood environment mixed into it. 
<laughs> you get where I'm coming from? So he he didn't present BMC to me, but when he mentioned it to me and I and I had already knew about them, at this particular time, I don't want to say I had like this cocky chip on my shoulder, but I I figured that they were still kind of small time. And when he mentioned them to me, I'm like, oh, that means, hold on, that means they they getting crazy over there. I'm like, yo, Gwitty, they popping over there like that, word? He like, yeah, bro, they doing their thing, bro. That's your hood. They all know about you, bro. They ask me about you every time they see me. They be like, yo, we don't want to see you unless you bringing KO out here. Mm-hmm. I'm like, word? But of course, at this time, I'm already six, seven years in and we go hard. Am I lying, King? Like, what? When did We Go Hard start 2010. compared to BMC? I know we was 2010, 2010. I don't know. I don't, I think right. We, I think BMC came around probably around like 13, 14, 15. I'm not. Somewhere around. Yeah, and, that, and that's probably from you knowing about them. Yeah. I'm probably hearing about them in 2016 where it was probably two big battles being talked about. You know what I'm saying? That wasn't really big battles, but. Had the highest views, I want to say. Right. You get what I'm saying? So I was just like, nah, you know what, KO, stay focused, stick to the plan. You know, remember I told you, I was still thinking about us daydreaming in the sky, like, Mm -hmm. we got to get this shit next to Smack. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? And we had so much raw footage coming out, dudes battling in the snow, dudes. Fabio had a beam on him in our battle. Shout out to my brother Fabio, man. Glad you still here. Mm-hmm. Glad you still living. Glad you still breathing. I just told him that. Yeah, nigga, you made it in the 24 with me too, you heard? Yeah. Gangster. I seen Fabio after 24. Yeah. Facts. And told him that. I think I think my homegirl had threw a taco Tuesday. I seen him in the hood. I'm like, yo, Fabio, I raised up the taco box. Like, you know you family. <laughs> you heard? Uh-huh. That's 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 the brotherhood love that I'm talking about. That 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 that, that was genuine. From 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 niggas that they ain't know each other, that probably would have never fed each other on regular accord or terms. That's what these new cats not gonna see, cause they mind frame is still is built so ignorant. Nah, I'ma just be biased. I'm just for my team, and I'ma just scream. Mm-hmm. That ain't what this is, dog. <laughs> you get where I'm coming from. But if that's cool with y'all, then that's cool. Yeah. I don't mind only seeing Fabio and being like this. Yo, what's up? Tacos over here. Because y'all dudes can't ever receive that love. Y'all too ignorant. Y'all mind too lost. <laughs> you get where I'm coming from? But, but yeah, I, I, like, he had a beam on. Like, I, I, during the battle, I, I, I feel like I saw it. I ain't going to lie. But I thought it was some play play shit. You know, maybe somebody took it off. Or maybe it was one of those keychain shits you heard. You ain't gonna see no fucking keychain through no YouTube video, city. You heard? <laughs> I'ma just tell you that for the people. You heard? But the footage never show who got it. You heard? When me and Fabio battled, nigga, city, you tell the people how much people was outside. Oh, shit, <laughs> it was, people was coming by the battle. You heard? Man. You, heard? you tell the people, people, don't double cross us. You people, heard? People was coming by. Shout the out battle. to shout out to Fabio. You heard? Shout out to Fabio, you heard? Don't double cross us, you heard? Yeah, was, you don't was, see was, battles like that and we was, go hard no more, you heard? Like Crazy. And I didn't really... You know, this is another thing that's going to probably rock people rock people's thoughts. When I, when I battled and my battles would be released, I never really watched them a lot. Like, back to back to back to back to back. Like, I never got myself tired of watching my battles. Like, I could watch one of my battles right now and be on my tiptoes on, on the edge of my seat. Like, yo, I don't even remember. Every If I had a battle and that battle passed, I don't remember the bars from it. I don't know if, I don't know. I don't know if that's something weird, if that's just me. I don't know if my mind got some type of dementia thought in my thoughts that's not allowing me to mm-hmm. memorize it after that. But after I battled, battled dudes, I don't remember the rounds or... Or what I said, I don't, I don't be having no memory of it really. Like, not that it immediately go away. Sometimes I'll be repeating some of the lines when I, you know what I'm saying? When yeah. I, if I had an outstanding battle and I really liked some of the bars that I was saying, I remember it. But almost probably, 
I could probably say a ball, one, two, three, maybe four balls from every battle that I had. But do I remember the round? No. Can I find a round? A lot of the battles, no, because I moved so much times in my life. But, you know, a lot of this stuff was written in books. I used to write in books a lot. Even when people started writing in their phones, I was still writing in my books. I just like the way it feels. You know what I'm saying? It just feel more meant to be said. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, you, you. If I, feel, I feel like if I write it in a phone, I'm still contemplating it. Like, damn, should I really say this? If I write it in my book, this is meant to be said about you. <laughs> you know, I, dig, I dig it. I dig it. Word. I dig it. Um, have you fucked any bitches off your battle rap name? <laughs> we ain't gotta say no names. We ain't gotta say who. It's just a question. We all know I can't people. plead the fifth. Do what you want, man. This ain't wild. Of now. course I did, City. I gotta ask, nigga, because some niggas have it. <laughs> some niggas have it. They so, do, they they better up their balls. You know what I'm <laughs> right. They better up their name. They better up their balls in right. their name. Right. Like I said, we ain't gotta say who. You know what I mean? Nah, of course I did. Of course I did, man. Shout out to those females, man, for right. being, you know, first viewers, then fans, then right. followers. Right. Then people I had a, a sexual affair with. Got you. <laughs> I'm going to say affair. Affair don't mean I smashed all of them. Don't mean yeah, it was absolutely. oral with all of them. Yeah. It could have been, you know what I mean, hot wings and some, and some shots at the ball, yeah, a little right. kissing. Right. You know, but the name KO, yo, let me tell you a funny story. One time, right, I'm walking with my moms alongside of the courtroom, and this dude flipped off his skateboard and was like, yo, that's KO? He was like, yo, man, can I get a picture? I'm like, all right, yeah, sure, man. I took the picture with him, he jumped back on his skateboard and, and spun off. He was like, but I think before he spun off, he was like, yo, when your next battle? I was like, yo, to, to be real, man, I'm not too sure. But, you know, when it come around, you'll know it's going to drop. You know, yeah. same channel, regular vibes. We go hard. He was like, all right, man. He was like, yo, man, yo, you fire, bro. Yo, keep killing them dudes, man. I'm with my moms. You heard some of my moms like, so when my son's some type of star? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, I don't know, ma, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, Word. Nah, I dig it, I dig it. But that was a real special moment that was built into my life from being a part of We Go Hard World. Got you, got you. All right, man, Um, let's talk about your clothing line that you got. Mm. Should be going it. The clothing line, the clothing line. Love-hate relationship with it, man. It's a love-hate relationship with it. Um, right now, it's still around. I mean, I still right ain't, now, I still ain't get mine yet. You ain't, you ain't get your um, yeah, you nothing, ain't get your sweatsuit nothing. yet. I will wear nothing. I will rock it on the show. I'll yeah, work. but I, I got you. It's coming soon. Coming soon. Right now, it's still around. I still got things in a in a in a I space. A, I ain't get a hat. I got things in a space. Nothing. Where I'm still able to, you know, print my logo on sweatsuits and create sweatsuit merchandise. But a lot of the connections that I had with the other merchandise was being that was being made, I kind of separated ties with those people. Okay. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. basically in business, you separate it. You know what I'm saying? Amongst the priority people that's amongst the business with you. Mm -hmm. So the person that you know, was trusted amongst the T-shirts that gravitated, that had their own connections and all of that, amongst the way the T-shirts and all of that was being arranged. I don't really deal with a lot of those people anymore. You get where I'm coming from? So that puts me back in a, in a space to... Pardon me. Pardon me. No, you go, you go, you go. It put me in a space to find those people that's going to sit down and, and, you know, develop those ideas and and, and, and thoughts on, on the T-shirts and create them and nail what I'm looking for for me to continue along the lines of the T-shirt basis. But as far as the sweatsuit basis, 
yes, we still got that going. We still got it strong. And yeah, it's definitely going to be some 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 sweatsuits being made. Of course, from everybody that's my people, they know that it's it's the heat press material similar to the material that you're wearing right now. Um, I say that because people have been asking for it to be stitched. You know, some people that really enjoy your logo, they try to see if, if you could get it stitched on. Yeah. Some people feel like it look better when it's stitched and things of that nature. But I'm just a young businessman, you know, no, coming up. It, so I, it, I, I haven't found, you know, too much people in the embroidery world. And um, I haven't much yet invested in an embroidery machine myself, even though I got a lot of connections of people with. Mm -hmm. Embroidery machine, I've been investing a lot of time to my new business, as you know, which is my barbershop that I opened in September 25th. Shout to that. Got you, got you. Yeah, speaking mm -hmm. of speaking of um barber, um have you ever cut any battle rappers here? I'm sure you have. I cut a bunch of battle rappers here. A lot. A lot. Which is which is which is really kind of crazy to say because I guess I say that because it was so scattered that it took a long time before me to confidently be like, oh, no, nah, I cut a lot. I cut a lot of battle rappers. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Three years ago, I probably would have said, I cut a few. You right. know what I'm saying? But today, I could say I cut a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I cut a lot of battle rappers. Got you. Got you. Got if, you. I, if I needed to drop some names with that, I think it would be yeah, cool. I mean, I mean, you could. For people I mean, to. It's up to you. You know what I mean? Yeah, for, people I mean yeah, know, for people to know. You know what I'm saying? Because I mean, people, people like, probably might feel like... You know motherfuckers going to think, oh, yeah, this nigga, Zeke, niggas and all kind of wild shit. So I, don't yeah. really, I don't really care too much yeah. on that, but I mean, people know. just might feel like... I know that, like, but you know, more, you know a nigga's yeah, mentality is like, yo. I just say that because I feel like people may feel like... There's a lot of people in battle rap now, city. Like, this culture yeah. done got big. Yeah. So I don't want people to think like... Yeah, he probably just cut the small time niggas. He ain't cut yeah. nobody popular. Right. You get what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I cut a lot of popular dudes. I've cut Styles before. Shout out to Styles from We Go Hard. Mm -hmm. I've cut Fabio a few times before. Shout out to Fabio from We Go Hard. He got dreads now. Mm -hmm. But, you know, a few people changed their styles over time. Styles had braids before. Now you got hair, a haircut now with the waves. But yeah. I cut Styles. I cut Fabio. I cut Ty Law from the DMV. If we want to go Ty outside Law. of Brooklyn, shout, shout out, out to Ty Law when he came down here. Anytime he had a battle down here, you like, yeah, Ko, you know I'm looking for you because yeah. I knew though I know through battle rap that you a barber. Yeah. <laughs> you heard so. Right. Shout out to Ty Law. I cut Carter before. You get what I'm saying? I've cut Clip. You know, even though you know Clip pretty much do his own thing, but I think maybe it might have just been a goatee before. I think he came through for that. Uh, who else I gave a cut to? I gave Biz a few cuts. Biz been a battle rapper in Coney Island since I was young. Like I battled Biz when I was when I was sixteen. Before I battled TD, I'm lying. I battled Biz when I was fifteen. I battled Biz when I was fifteen. No YouTube. Right. I don't even think YouTube was really. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Something that was allowing anybody to just upload anything. I mm -hmm. think you could just click on it to see what they had up there. Yeah. <laughs> you know what right, I'm saying? Right, right. So that was back when I battled um um Biz. But yeah, I gave Biz a few cuts. Okay. He a battle rapper. Who else? Oh man, damn. Damn. Shout out to um LB the boss, man. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, LB the boss, man. Damn. Rest in peace. Cut, I cut LB, word, and um, of course you know I cut my boy Polo. That's my dog. Hey, shout <laughs> you know to Polo. Shout, to Polo, shout Polo. out to Polo. Shout out to Polo. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, I cut Chess. chess. I'm bugging. Okay. I gave definitely hooked Chess up with a good cut before. I'm bugging. I cut Dougie. Shout out to Dougie. I cut money. Shout out to money. What's good? Okay. You know what I'm yeah, saying? You know what I'm saying? Like about. yeah. It's, yeah. a, it's a, a few of them, man. I, I, I just want to tell y'all, everybody I just named, I appreciate y'all. I appreciate the love. I've been cutting hair since I was 19. Just got my first barbershop at 31. I want to tell each and every last one of y'all, 
I appreciate I appreciate y'all for being a part of my journey, word, to getting there. Y'all didn't have to come. Y'all exactly. came out of the love, word, and that was real. Right, word. right. Is there anyone else for you to battle when we go hard? Or you feel like you really don't give a fuck? Because I kind of feel like you battled everybody. Not really everybody, but, you know, your peers. There's still a few running around that, you know what I'm saying? There's certain yeah. battles that I that I personally want to see that it probably won't happen because of the relationship now. Like, yeah. I wanted to see you and Styles at, at, a, at a time, a point. Oh, word. Yeah. It got there? Remember, remember we was in the park? You know what I mean? Remember when I bought the camera and shit? You know what I mean? I had you and Styles in the park. We, I was testing around my camera. Yeah. Like, at that time, I wanted to see it. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? It's so, I don't it's know if you remember battles. this. I don't know if you remember this. But I'm going to say this on camera. Just because Styles tried to get at my man, Brooklyn Carter up here. <laughs> What's up? Even though we all, we all family, yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, no absolutely, love lost. Absolutely. But I remember when we did the first cypher in the toilet bowl, might have been the third or fourth time that I that I seen Styles or met Styles and was around him. He was like, yo, what up, KO? What up, big dog? You know, niggas telling me around here cooking shit and all that, like, I don't know if niggas told you about you, nigga, because I put niggas in the dirt too, nigga. Like, we could get it in, nigga. We could we could catch wreck, nigga. I ain't I ain't gonna try to sound too cocky. Like I ain't like I ain't hear your name out here in these streets, but we could catch wreck. Like, I'm like, yo, bro, we could battle then, nigga. It ain't nothing. Cause that was just my drive and my energy. I was more, I was crazy hungry at that time. So we both look at you. I'm like, yo, city. Why he I'm like yo city. You was like, yo, yo, Kel, I ain't I ain't gonna do that. I ain't he ain't even, he ain't ready yet. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, yo, what? He was like, yeah, nah, he ain't ready yet. So I was like, all right. And that's that, that's the that's the city that we was blessed to get versus the city now. You don't got that relationship with these dudes now to, to be to tell these dudes like, nah, I don't think Tom ain't really ready for, for money or I don't think Henny ready for Carter. I, you more on the business side of letting things just happen and play out the way they want it to play out. And, yeah. Nigga, I'm from a time when niggas, I could look in the camera and tell niggas I'm from a time when niggas couldn't battle me with this man around right here. This man to look me dead in the face like, don't waste your time, bro. You get what I'm saying? And shout out to Styles. Styles is a great writer, great battle rapper. You get where I'm coming from. But around that time, when when I when I was hungry and I was and I was coming all those stops away from from home to come here and battle, man. <laughs> Do you feel like people don't fuck with you? For whatever reason, they don't fuck with you. The thoughts on that is kind of awkward because I made myself my own my own favorite person in battle rap. And I say that because I say that due to the pioneers. Like I'm I come up hearing all of the pioneers, right? Even dudes like Cassidy, like, yo, I'm five thousand and one. I'm 5,000 and oh, you heard? I ain't never lose. I, I, and hearing dudes like Rex, like, yeah, I, I done went, battled everybody on 116th. Then I went down to 120th. I battled everybody over there. Then I went, me and Mook went to 125th. We battled everybody over there. We caught everybody. Remember, we even asked, T, we even asked Tito to tell niggas to come out the projects. Niggas is name dropping and all that, but that ain't no footage. You feel where I'm coming from? Yeah. Shout out to Goods. Goods had footage. Battling Cassidy. In the in in the beginning, years ago, like Goods was wearing a headband. You probably won't ever catch Goods. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? From yeah. from these from these years of times, the way trends been been gravitating. You ain't catching Goods wearing no headband. At least not the one he had on when he battled Cassidy right. in that studio. But that's just the pioneer I am in rap that I research these things and I'm gonna dig in the crates. Past years and years and years to figure out who had what. And a lot of these dudes don't got a science of the, of the, of the stories that they portray. KO got that footage. KO at 16, that's up there. At 17, that's up there. Guess what? 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, that's up there. 24, 25, 26, 27, that's up there. 28, 29, 30, 31, 
It's all there. And that's what make me my my own favorite battle rapper. Mm -hmm. I'm not a dude that's 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 like, yo, 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 Carter, call City right now. Yo, call City. This nigga Mercy over here talking crazy. Yeah. <laughs> this nigga Mercy over here talking like, what? Yo, yo call City. I don't I didn't I didn't ever want to participate in that argument. Type it in, my brother. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, anything you want to address to those, to those people? Or anything you want to address at all? Um, nah, I don't, I don't got really nothing per se that I want to address. I just want to, um, I don't know, probably say that with it being nobody left for me to battle when we go hard, that I'm probably... Hanging up my jersey, jersey now. Got you. Got you. You know what I'm saying? Finally, after all these years, it's got been you. a lot of years. Yeah, over a decade. It's been a lot of years. It's been over a decade. And even with my last battle, you feel me, for it coming to terms of like battling somebody like Fetty that lived with me. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I feel like now it's just grown to a point that's that that it came closer in life. With battle rap, as far as like, with me being local, you get what I'm saying? Cause I didn't really, I didn't really know until I battled Ish, that um the dudes that got accepted, they kind of didn't really think that they was gonna get called out by the dudes that was already accepted. You get what I'm saying? So I just want to say thanks, man. Thanks to them dudes, man. No doubt. No doubt. For them fights, thanks to a lot of years of greatness, man. I don't want to get emotional up no here. Doubt. <laughs> I see my eyes. We human, up. man. We human. Yeah, man. I see Remember my that. eyes getting watery. We human, man. But <laughs> no doubt, no doubt. We human, my nigga. Always forget that. Yo, rest in peace, Spaz, man. I ain't it's even gonna leave from up here without saying that, man. Oh, people, my brother, man. Because your soul. Yo, he was from the beginning of time, man. A lot of people ain't get to meet him, or, or you know yeah. what I mean, like experience the type of soul. Right, a human being that that dude was, but you know what I mean. He was he was another dude that was like you know like like genuine. You heard like yeah. I moved around a lot of places. I like I used to live in a style like my pops, God bless the dead, was big over there in in Crown Heights on Northern and Herkimer. Okay, and um, Explode is a is a popular studio yeah. over there. You know, on Fulton, yeah, you know, yeah and, um, right. and you know me being a dude. That just used to be outside a lot. Mm -hmm. I, I remember times I used to be outside in front of the corner store trapping, and I'm bumping in the spaz. He going to the spaz is going to the studio. You heard? Yeah. And he taking me off the block. Like yo, Kale, yo, pull up, man. You you ain't gonna lose no money, man. You come on. I bet you got. I bet you got. If you got under a hundred dollars, you could stay right here. If you got over a hundred, you come with me upstairs. Like he like, and we young. Yeah. I'm 17, we, I'm 17, 18. My friends don't got 200 in their clothes, 300 in their clothes. They don't got that. I never asked Spaz, I never said, yo, Spaz, how much money you got on you? I know he had that in his clothes, though. You heard? He going to the studio, Explode Studio. An hour and Explode, like $50. Mm. Probably like 60, 75 now. You heard? But. Yeah. Back in that time, I'm, 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 you know what I'm saying? I'm getting that when he was here. You feel me? So, yeah. Shout out to him. You know what well, I'm saying? No Being doubt. somebody I met, and we go hard. That was, 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 was pushing and chasing his dreams, and 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 we go hard. Lost him to the streets. You know what I'm saying? We lost Telly. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Rest right. in peace. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. We we lost a few people, but yeah. We go hard still here. We still going. Right. We still moving. Rest so, in peace, J.O. You know I'm saying? Yeah, rest uh, in peace, J.O. Yeah, yeah, That's my yeah. heart. Like, right, gotta right. rest in peace, Fab. Yeah. Fab was yeah. a part of us. Fab was yeah. our first cameraman, yeah. huh? Nah, he was around, though. He oh, was, he was around. He was the cameraman for the web series. Yeah, I'm bugging. I'm, yeah, you know what? Yeah. Fab was, he was, yeah. he was, Fab was tatting. Nah, but he was around, though. He was tatting niggas. He would have been yeah. We Go Hard first tattoo artist. Yeah. Gangster, you heard? Because I, I ain't even really know until later on that that Fab was tatting niggas, but he he we was family to him. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Bro, so shout out to everybody that, Jones too. that we was Jones. able to um gravitate to and 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 be looked at as family to. Another thing I want to say on here too is around the time we go we go hard started. What made me come? <laughs> 
Yo, this is crazy because, yo, I swear, I, I would, yo, the me today, we go hard would have never been here. <laughs> I look at that young nigga like, yo, bro, you was out your mind. You went from Coney Island to Brownsville. Bro, if y'all would have killed me, Coney Island wouldn't even have been mad. I mean, I'm I say that guessing. You heard? They probably they probably might have been mad at y'all. Like, nah, y'all violated. <laughs> but I say they wouldn't have been mad because it's like, yo, bro, what are you doing over there? Who sent you over there? Yeah, I remember all that shit that was going on too. You feel where I'm coming from? So it's just like, I don't know. I just I just say like around the time when I started and We Go Hard, what motivated me to, to open up those doors was the fact that whatever happened with, I don't know if it was rent or the government, the doors to Empire had closed. Which is a well known skating ring in Brooklyn. You know Empire Empire Skating, Empire, ring, Empire Empire skating ring. Yeah, of so when they took that from us, <sighs> my heart started my heart started bleeding different. You heard? Like, mind you, I'm blood. I ain't ever get jumped at Empire. Ever. Ever. Been going there, been flagging, been representing what I'm yeah. representing. Mm-hmm. I ain't ever get jumped at Empire Skating Ring. I mean, I, I was always a dude that knew a lot of people, but <laughs> yeah, feel was, where I'm coming from. Empire was lit on Fridays. Friday, t- um, Friday Teen Night. It was called. <laughs> it was called Friday Teen Night or Friday, some shit like yeah, that. It was lit on Friday. Yeah, yeah. Friday. It used to be jumping. It used to be lit. lit. Facts. Then they took that from us. Cause, yeah, because mind you, even with it being Empire Skating Ring, they had them certain Friday nights where. After a certain time, they would demand to bring the skates in. And now they just playing music. So it's like a party on the floor. You heard? Uh-huh. Niggas is in a minute sensor. Yeah. Niggas is dubbing. Yeah. Niggas is, hey, right, hey, right. hey, uh-huh. getting crazy, yes, you heard? Sir. Yes, sir. I'm like, yo, what? Ain't no more Empire? Yeah, man. Then you called me. You talking about this battle league. I'm like, man. <laughs> yo, I ain't going to lie. Every battle make you contemplate if you should get fly or not, and we go hard. <laughs> you heard? <laughs> Mind you, I always come decent. But every battle, you like, nah, I don't know if I should wear my the last pair of jeans I bought or the pair I bought before the, those because cause I might punch somebody in the head. It, it got broke or go down. <laughs> like, yeah. You never know if you want to be flea to the T or partial. Right, <laughs> you feel right. me? But it's love. Like we go hard as New York City, man. I'm I'm glad that you no. had me to be a part of that, man. No doubt, bro. It's definitely love. You already. You always gonna be my brother, man. You already. For man. sure. I'm glad that I I came in the sport with no enemies, and I'm back leaving without no enemies. You heard? There's a few dudes that probably think they got smoke with me because they probably think I'm looking for them because they know they probably say, "Yo, fuck your mother," or or I don't care. Well, I mean, like, yeah. I don't care if that's your girl, nigga. Right. I'm be in her inbox anyway. I'm, I'm gonna talk to whoever I want. I don't care if you brung her to an event. Like, you know, dudes just be thinking that you know what I mean. They can, I mean, they can say anything to you now, or because they said something to you then that you might care at where you at in life now. But the end result is, you should never, you should never jeopardize and put what you got on the line. Versus somebody that's beneath you, allow them to allow them to be in a position to lose more. Mm-hmm. If you going up against somebody and 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 they not gonna lose more out the situation, then you earn more points from walking away. You get what I'm saying? Because if you surrender to acting off emotions, you might win the fight, but you lose the war overall. And that's and that's that's the story on these battle rappers today. I'm 31 years old. I got my own barbershop. It's on 472 Fulton Street, right there next to the famous Glizzy stand. Pause for the ignorant members watching, and for the youngins. But yeah, anybody that's willing to come through, they could come through and get a haircut. I I just want to say, you know what I mean? Over over this podcast, that I appreciate you, city. You feel me? Like that. That was somebody that gave another dude a, a opportunity 
that might have seemed that <laughs> that might have seemed a lot risky <laughs> from being a street dude on the outside looking in. I still gotta thank you, like to this day, from it from it being something that escaped me from idle time. You get where I'm coming from? That could have allowed me to be getting in trouble or doing something stupid with my life or or, or or digging a hole in my life that was too deep for me to climb out of. You feel me? You was able to help with that, with this league and, and being able to bring battle rap together. So I appreciate you for that work. You already, man. You already, man. Closing doors, man. Episode six. KO on the set, Mr. Live and Direct. Still live and direct. Still live they and know direct. Know even mean? though, even though I ain't, you know, battling over when we go hard, and I feel like all of my peers was people that I battled already now mm-hmm. at this point from 16 to 31. Other league owners tap in. Now I mean, my name is my real name on Facebook, which is Kashim Latham, for those who don't know. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? K A S H E E M. Last name Latham. L A T H A M. Hit me on Facebook, Instagram, L O E dot K O. You know what I mean? Any other league owners, R B E, whatever platform you from, hit me up. We could we could make some movies happen over there. You know what I mean? But but make sure the sportsmanship is in order, man. <laughs> make sure these dudes ain't gonna be over there crying, man. Cause I ain't coming to play, man. But. Yeah, for right. right now, you know, I'm 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 more so just chilling, you know, being a being a person that's trying to get this business and barbershop thing off the ground, which is something I always did and always focused on. And that's that. Word. All right. Episode six, man. Mm-hmm. We out. Views from the city. How about you boy?